Passive income is the holy grail of financial independence and for a lot of people this represents in their minds nothing more than sitting on a beach and collecting paychecks month after month without actively having to trade your energy and time in exchange for income. Now while that would seem quite appealing it should be quite obvious to you that this scenario is far from how passive income is actually generated and how you go about creating business systems that create passive income for you on a consistent basis. And I'd go as far as saying that the word passive income has very much become a buzzword in today's society, representing an idealistic financial situation without actually understanding how passive income is generated and how you can actually go about putting in place passive income sources that will be somewhat consistent over the long run. Hey everyone, my name is Griffin and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be diving into passive income, how you can go about implementing different passive income streams in your life, and how I was able to generate roughly $2,420 of passive income in the month of April. Now I personally wish I stumbled upon a video like this one a couple years back because I had no real concrete knowledge of how passive income was actually created and how you go about creating business systems that will generate you income month after month without you having to actually trade your time and energy for that revenue. Now personally, I'll kind of admit it here, when I was younger and I would hear the word passive income, uh, what would come to my mind was kind of just money falling from the sky and uh, once again, I kind of didn't understand how it worked. So hopefully in today's video, this will clear that up and will give you some different paths of how you can actually go about generating some passive income for yourselves. And the reality here is that passive income is actually going to be income that you're generating from either investing capital, so money into say the stock market or in real estate with a cash flowing asset, or if you're going to be investing your time and energy up front into making content such as YouTube videos, blogs, or any sort of information product that you're going to be able to sell online over the coming months and years without having to go back and invest more of that time because you've already invested that time and energy into making the content. But the key takeaway here is that passive income requires a lot of capital invested up front and there is no real way around it. If you want to be making substantial money over the long run, you're going to want to create a really good business system that's able to sustain monthly cash flow instead of looking for quick flash in the pan business ideas that are just going to fizzle out over the coming months if you don't continue building on that one business system. So the goal of today's video is really to break down that $2,420 figure that you saw in the title of today's video to really show you that there are different ways that you can generate passive income online and these are things that you can implement yourselves in your life if you really want to. And I do want to mention here that the three different revenue streams I'm going to be discussing are qualified for myself as passive income because it's all income that I generated from efforts that I put in a long time ago and I didn't have to actively trade my time in the month of April for that income. And everything I cover in my videos is to help you guys succeed with your financial goals. So if you're interested in personal finance, investing and saving money, then subscribe to the channel. You will not be disappointed. And also make sure to like this video if you're looking to build your own passive income streams. All right, so let's get right into it. The first stream of passive income was from monetizing my YouTube channel through ad revenue placed on my videos. So every single time someone either views an advertisement at the beginning of one of my videos or clicks on one of the advertisements throughout the length of my video, I pretty much get a small percentage of that advertising sale. And with enough view volume on your channel, you can expect to see quite a bit of revenue. Now, in my case, last month, I generated roughly 550 Canadian dollars from ad revenue alone on my YouTube channel. However, I do want to mention that $550 in ad revenue on my YouTube channel in the month of April does not equate to $550 in ad revenue next month or in a year from now. But that's just the nature of YouTube ad revenue. When you go through cycles of views, you can expect to see either more or less ad revenue, but that's just the name of the game. In fact, the revenue that you're going to generate from views on your YouTube channel is going to be extremely volatile because it's really going to depend on how well your videos are doing over a certain month. Um, if YouTube decides that they really like one of your pieces of content, they might push it to a wide audience and therefore for one month you might have a spike in ad revenue. And my channel is actually a really good representation of how volatile YouTube ad revenue can really be because about 80% of all my revenue is generated from one single video that I posted back in like 2013 or 2011, something like that, where for some reason on a cyclical basis, YouTube seems to really like this piece of content and pushes it out to a wide audience. Now in contrast to this, all the videos that I've made recently about personal finance do not get nearly as many views and for that reason I don't really generate all that much income from those videos. 
However, the CPM, so the dollars that I receive per thousand views on my finance videos are much higher than the video that I posted back in 2011. So for that reason, it kind of balances out. But once again, uh, I, I get between 70 and 80% of my ad revenue from a viral video that I posted back in about 2013. Now, if you're interested in knowing more about the breakdown of revenue per 1000 views on my videos, I made a video right here that goes in detail. So check it out if that's of interest to you. Now, finally, I do qualify my ad revenue from YouTube as passive income because once again, it's time that I've invested in the past and I'm reaping the rewards every single month moving forward. So I made, for example, videos back in 2011 and the beginning of 2018 that still make me money every single month. So for that reason, even though I'm filming videos on a constant basis, pretty much every single week, uh, I'm making money from videos that were made in the past. So that's it for the first stream of passive income. The second stream of passive income that I generated last month is from affiliate links and affiliate programs where I'm basically promoting different products and services from companies that I genuinely enjoy and use and I wanna share them with my audience. So the concept of an affiliate program is pretty straightforward and you're probably already aware of it. And then subsequently they go through that link and make a purchase. I pretty much get a small commission on that sale. And yes, I do realize that for most people using affiliate links and affiliate programs might not be a good way for you to generate passive income. However, this is the power of having a YouTube channel or a blog. So when you have an audience, you're able to reach a certain amount of people and affiliate programs become really useful for you. Just remember that not all passive income is truly passive income because you still need to put in a substantial amount of work up front in order to reap future rewards. So personally, last month, I made roughly $1,450 through affiliate programs that I was promoting through my YouTube channel. And this was actually generated through three affiliate programs only because I personally only like to promote products and services that I genuinely use on a daily basis. Um, because otherwise, if I'm promoting things that I don't actually know anything about, I think it's pretty lousy and I don't really wanna share that with my audience. So the first affiliate program that I promote is for American Express. Now, I personally have their Cobalt card, which is a Canadian credit card that's really, really good. If you don't know anything about it, check out this video right here. It's one of the best Canadian credit cards that you can have right now. So the way that the American Express affiliate program works is every time I refer someone through my link and then they sign up and get approved for the card, I get five 5,000 American Express points, which equates to $50. Now on the flip side, the person that I refer gets 2,500 points for every single month during the first year that they put $500 on the card. So it's really a win-win situation for everyone. And like I said, I only promote things that I actually enjoy. And the American Express Cobalt card is truly one of the best Canadian credit cards that you can have. Now last month, six people signed up for the card through my affiliate link. So that made me a total of 30,000 points or roughly 300 Canadian dollars in value. Now, technically, I do realize that this isn't hard cash that I got into my bank account, for example, but nonetheless, I still got 30,000 American Express points, which is a value of $300 that I'm gonna be using towards trips that I wanna go on anyways. So that's really why I'm counting this as passive income for the month. The second affiliate program that I participate in is called Jungle Scout Affiliates, which makes one of the best Chrome extensions for analyzing a market on Amazon for when you're doing Amazon FBA. FBA. I personally use this tool in my Amazon FBA business for over a year. It's really good and that's why I'm sharing it with my audience. And every time someone makes a purchase through my link, I make $27 in revenue. So last month, four people signed up, giving me a total of roughly $110. Another Amazon service that I have an affiliate link for is called Feedback Wiz in a couple of my previous videos. And this is a company that does automatic email campaigns for your Amazon FBA products so that you can get reviews. Last month, I made $43 from the feedback with affiliate code, giving me a total of about $153 total for the Amazon FBA referral links. All right, so finally, the last referral program that I'm a part of is the Wealth Simple Referral Program, which is a bit different than the other ones in that every time someone uses my link to sign up and make an account, I get $10,000 managed for free within that account. So once again, although this was not hard cash that I received, they had an incentive program over the winter called the Winter Referral Program, where if you referred over three people, you would receive $500 deposited into your account. So having referred over 30 people, I got the $500 deposited into my account, but then I also took the opportunity to use my girlfriend's referral code so that she could also get $500 deposited into her account. So that was a total of $1,000 that I generated last month. 
So in total during the month of April, I was able to generate roughly $1,450 from referral programs alone. But next month, however, it's really important to note that I'm not gonna make nearly as much money because I'm not gonna generate any of that income from Wealthsimple, which represented roughly two thirds of all that referral income. Okay, so the last source of passive income that I generated for the month of April could for some people be considered as not really truly passive income, but I'm talking here about stock market portfolio appreciation and dividend earnings. And last month in my personal ETF portfolio, I generated roughly $420 between the dividend earnings and the capital appreciation. Technically speaking though, this is passive income because it's money that I generated from a lump sum of cash invested in the stock market and I didn't have to do anything to generate that income. However, just like the other methods of passive income that we discussed in today's video, I do want to mention that your portfolio appreciation can vary tremendously from month to month depending on a multitude of factors such as what the market conditions are like and what you're actually invested in. It's absolutely inevitable that some months you're going to see a negative return while other months you could see a 5 all the way up to 10 percent return who knows now personally i'm a huge fan of broad market etfs mostly with vanguard and horizon i have a whole portfolio comprised of their etfs for roughly about fourteen thousand dollars in total portfolio value if you're interested in knowing more about my portfolio breakdown then check out the video right here where i go in depth about the different etfs that i hold in my portfolio and finally i want to mention that i made about 26 dollars 50 in dividends from that portfolio last month so that's definitely passive income at its purest all right so with all three passive income streams, I was able to generate roughly $2,420 in passive income last month. If there's anything that I want you guys to take away from this video, it's that building passive income streams, it takes a lot of hard work and either capital or time invested up front. So if you're able to consistently work on business systems over the coming months and years, you can also generate passive income for yourselves.